and gentlemen, and welcome to New Hope in the Lord. I'm Reverend Joseph, your host, and with me is my co-host, Sarah Miles. Sarah, it's uh, good to see you, and uh, you have been blessed today by our guest. Yes. She is somebody you know for a little while. All her life. All her life. All her life. And, and now you're sitting next to her as uh, family members of God. Yes. Which is more important than natural family members. Two bloodlines. Two uh, bloodlines. Two bloodlines. Isn't that great? <laughs> two bloodlines. That, that's, that's phenomenal. Natural and yeah. spiritual. That's so good to have it like that. Yes, you know, yes. where people, um, especially when you know that what you're involved in is the truth. Amen. Amen. Because a lot of people are involved in what is not truth. And they think it's truth. Mm, deception. And 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 I was just uh, uh, saw on TV the Tom Cruise's daughter uh, is like the poster child now. Uh, she's growing up mm. for Scientology. Yes. You see. Yes. And so um, in their mind they believe it's the truth because they believe something that was ingrained in them. Yes. Uh, where that they just believe it, like all religion. Mm -hmm, religion. But religion is not the answer. It's not the answer. You know? Jesus is the answer. Hallelujah. 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 So ladies and gentlemen, you're going to enjoy this show here because uh, not only is our guest uh, Sarah's bloodline, but she's got some testimony. And I don't care what you've been through, what you're going through, Jesus can change everything around for you if you let him do it. So, would you like to introduce our guest today? Yes, yes. We're going to have a great show today. Amen. I have my cousin on, April Best. That is the best to me. Glory so, to we're here to just listen to your testimony and do it the way God would have you to do it. Amen. 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 And you can start by uh, telling us where you are now, and then we will digress to where you came from, okay? Yes. That would be the digression. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like night and day. Like yes. night and day. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Out of darkness into his marvelous Ooh, light. Yes. From the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus. Yes. Right? And, and you know, April, when people are in the kingdom of darkness and they're involved in it and their minds aren't open to the truth, they think they have the truth. Yes. Because the thing is, the darkness looks so good. Yeah. Because when you're in darkness, uh, even though you're blind, you can't see. Mm -hmm. But the darkness many times makes you feel good mm -hmm. in the beginning, mm -hmm. makes you happy, mm -hmm. ma makes you just kind of say, this is, I found it. <laughs> but uh, tell about your light now, and then we'll go back into, into the darkness. Yeah, can I just say to that, though, mm -hmm. it's a setup of the enemy. Mm -hmm because pleasures only last for a season. That's the word. However, in my time of darkness, by the grace of God, because of my family heritage, mm -hmm. there was a place in my mind and in my heart that I believed in Jesus. Mm. And I remember being deceived to a degree that I prayed, Lord, I want to continue to do what I'm doing, but I don't want to go to hell. <laughs> so, Father, and I, I referred to him, Father, Lord, Jesus. I said, please give me at least two minutes before I take my last <laughs> breath <laughs> so that I don't go to hell and I can go to heaven. Yeah, yeah th that's, that's kind of a, um, that's not too much of a selfish prayer, is it, uh, April? <laughs> <laughs> Give, me two minutes. <laughs> Give me two minutes. Give me two minutes. Two minutes. I yeah. surely did not know then what mm. I know now. Amen. Amen. Because life in Christ has changed my life. Yes. It has changed the total trajectory of my life. It has changed my family's life. It changed how I see things, how I do things, mm -hmm. my mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, transformation. I received the word of God. I received enough of the word of God to believe in my mouth, with, with my heart, mm -hmm. and 
confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And then I was discipled, and I'm still being discipled. Mm -hmm. I'm still being taught. Mm -hmm. But the years of discipleship that I received so far in the Word of God and in the presence of God has renewed my mind yes, and thereby transformed my life in the most incredible way. Yes, and, and truly, I am a witness to that. Uh, As I say, she's my blood in two ways, blood naturally and blood spiritually. So I kind of walked with her in a sense from the time that of her transformation because it was like, uh, like she told me the testimony about two minutes, give me two minutes, and I'm going, April, come on. I says, you just can't. You're, and some people still feel that way today because they, she said she believed. I think she knew of because of her grandmother. Absolutely. You knew of, but you really truly didn't know him the way you know him today because the transformation has made you into who you are. You know, I think that um, the, 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 the era that we live in now, um, all over the world, um, the, the Bible, which is on the table here, be open. Um, is no more than a fiction book to so many people mm. because generations after generation have gone by the laws and the, uh, that man have made mm -hmm. and, and, and which has supersede uh, people who go to church uh, um, but aren't having a relationship with Christ. Well, the, the law says I can do this. So I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, because it's the law. But the Bible is the highest book in the world, because it's 100% true. And, and so what happened is, is that people look at the Bible as trash, a lot of them. But here's one scripture that you described, April, that could refute any atheist, any people who are, uh, you know, anti-Christ, anti-God, if anybody in Second Corinthians five seventeen be in Christ, Come on. they be a new creature. All things pass, pass away. away. All things have become new. Hallelujah. The Hallelujah. devil wishes that scripture was never that's printed. Hallelujah! Because that's the witness that you overcome him, the devil, in Revelation twelve eleven by the blood of the Lamb Hallelujah. and the word of your testimony. testimony. So why don't you just continue uh, with your testimony about? Where you are now, I see that you're you're an author. Praise God, I am an author. Um, this uh, place of being an author has brought me to another level of relying on the Lord and yes. trusting in His Spirit. I've learned to be obedient. So I didn't plan to be an author. I didn't desire to be an author. I desire to do what the Lord called me yes, to do. Yes. And so he called me to write the book, The Breakthrough. You could hold it up and go This over is there The Breakthrough. And talk about it. <laughs> and as you can see on the cover, there is a butterfly. The butterfly is indicative of our lives in transformation. Yes. It is a metaphor in the uh, metaphor Lord, metamorphosis in the process. And so our lives as Christians, the Bible says to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so the word of the Lord in this book helps us through the progressive transformation. Breakthrough is symbolic of deliverance, it is symbolic of discovery because the word allows us to discover things about ourselves and things about God that we could not know or comprehend on our own. Mm. And the more that we discover who God is, because that's what happened from that place of transformation on the bed that I just wanted to go to heaven to now I want to be in his presence. I want to serve him. I want to love him. I want to honor him. I know what life is 
because he said that he came to give us life and to give it to us more abundantly. So now that I'm experiencing the life in Christ, he told me, sit down and write. And so with that, I had to spend a year, a lot of time sacrificing and being focused, setting aside the distractions to rely on the Lord and what he wanted this book to represent. So the front, the cover says a 30 day guide for encountering God experiencing freedom and enjoying success. It's 30 days morning and evening because the scripture says that Joshua in Joshua one, that when we meditate on the word of God day and night, we will have good success. Amen. The content of the book is worship, devotional reflections and prayer conclusively that all leads to the divine presence of God. Mm. It's an aid for new believers, for mm. unbelievers, and it is a resource for the mature believer because the foundation is laid through believing in Christ and the change that takes place. However, the progression is through the book and spending time with the word, Jesus is the word, but the written word and allowing that time in his presence to reveal things to us according to the scriptures. The prayers are just launching pads for people who may not know how to pray or have never had a prayer life because the prayer themselves is according to the word. God responds to his word. Amen. And so it's an awesome book designed by God for people of all ages, generations, genders. Although there's a butterfly on the cover, that is indicative of the breakthrough that we have in Jesus. In Jesus. Now, where does that butterfly come from? It comes from... A it comes from a caterpillar. Caterpillar. Mm -hmm. Right. And so... Well, I, I say we're all caterpillars when we're born. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, everybody's born in sin mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, nobody's right with God and nobody seeks the Lord. So so the caterpillar gets yes. transformed into the butterfly. Mm. You know, there's a scripture that um, mm -hmm. is so yes, gracious Lord. to us to understand. Proverbs 10, 22. The blessings of the Lord makes one rich mm. and he adds no sorrow to it. Now, the devil makes people rich because didn't he tell Jesus, come up to, he showed him to come up to the uh, top mm -hmm. of the mountain, mountain, bow down to me, and I'll give you all these kingdoms of the world. Mm. Well, I mean, come on, say, and you know who created all these <laughs> kingdoms? Jesus. Yeah. And now you're saying, I'll give it. No, he, he gave you the keys because Adam and Eve sinned. <laughs> so, so basically... What's happened out there is people, a lot of people have power, a lot of people have money, mm -hmm. a lot of people have fame, but it's mm -hmm. coming from the wrong source. It's mm -hmm. coming from Satan. Mm -hmm. But the blessings of the Lord makes one rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. And many of those people that I just said about, they have a lot of sorrow. And a lot mm -hmm. of them end up committing suicide and death. Tell us some of your sorrows growing up, uh, April, about how... Uh, your life has been transformed miraculously by the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I remember my grandmother being such a woman of virtue, a praying woman, went to church every Sunday, kept the Bible open, and, and her life was a representative, a representation of what she believed. Yes. In the midst of chaos, confusion, drunkenness, infidelity. Come on. She was a light that just shined, you know, and she had dinner, which she called supper, on the table, five o'clock <laughs> every day. It didn't matter how wretched my grandfather acted. She knew her role as a woman of God. Yes. 
Yes. I admire that. I desire that. I long for that. I love my mom. God bless her and she's saved to this day. Glory to God. But at the time, that was not her story. And so it was like looking into a window and saying, you know, it just came to me. It was like looking in a store window and seeing something on display. And it's like, I want that. Mm. That was from your grandmother. Yes, and, and but yet you're on the outside. outside. looking in. But there was something that I gleaned and that desire that was in me was what the Lord used to war against the sinful nature in my flesh. Like in Romans, when he says, why do I do the things that I don't want to do, O wretched man that I am? Mm -hmm. So there was this war, and it started young, because my grandmother was a part of my life from young. The cycle of being dysfunctional increased, and it evolved into bad relationships, bad company, bad decisions. Mm -hmm. Doing leads to bad things. And, and the yeah. thing is, is that there's no way out. Um, the world has no way out. They have doctors, they have psychologists, they have psychiatrists that, that will help you in one area. But the total breakthrough can't come from religion. It can't, from, can't come from man. Mm. It can't come through the things of the world. Only that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. But, see, you had a form. You, you believed in here because your grandmother. Mm -hmm. But the church didn't give you that other step to receive Christ in your heart, that he could make you the person that you are today. Yeah. And so uh, through uh, all of this stuff that you went through, April, um, it is good as far as knowing now where you are now to help others Absolutely. that were that way. And it's a learning experience if you look at it that way, right? Absolutely. I had to encounter God. We all have to have our own personal, personal. individual encounter yeah. with our maker, our creator, the lover of our souls come and come to know him as our redeemer. Yes, yes. Because the scripture says that the thief, the enemy, the liar, he comes to rob, kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said, I come to give you life and give it more abundantly. Could you share, could you share your personal experience that that encounter, how did that encounter take place with you? your encounter with knowing that God is who he say he is through his son, Jesus Christ. What was your encounter? What happened? Well, I remember being so desperate and being caught up in an addiction that I wanted out of. I wanted out of First, I wanted out of it when I had to suffer consequences for it. Every time that I would get myself into something, I'd pray, Lord, get me out of it. And he would, because he's gracious. He's merciful. He's long-suffering. It's like the guy over in, in uh, fighting in the war. Lord, if you get me, you know, I'm in the bunker here. Uh -huh. Don't get me killed. And when I get home, I'm going to serve you. Mm -hmm. And as soon as he gets home, he forgets that prayer that he <laughs> forgets that prayer that he said. You saved me from being killed. Everybody around me, you know, was injured or killed. I'm fine. And yet go home and, okay. I feel, hey, everything's you know. fine now. You know, you got me out of that yeah. one, Lord. So Yeah. But it's a vicious cycle because yeah. there is an enemy. Yes. And God came to save those that are lost. Before I was even born, he knew that I would be saved. Yes. Before, mm. even while I was in the worst part of the muck and mire, sometimes feeling like there was no hope, God knew I'd be here today. 
He knew that I'd be sitting here giving him glory Hallelujah. today. Hallelujah. And so even in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of the the sadness, the depression, the, the tears, the disappointment, mm. the abandonment, the rejection, mm. the sorrow. When you look back in hindsight, you can trace that God was with you all, all the, time. the time. The reason I'm not dead is because he kept me alive. The reason why I have a sound mind is because he kept me alive. Mm. The reason why I can testify that he's merciful. His compassions yes. fail not. Yes. yes, yes. The reason why I can testify of his love is because it's so undeserving. Hmm. It's so undeserving. Yeah, that's scriptural. Hmm. Uh, you know, uh, God so loved the world. Yes. That he gave. What did he give? Uh, he, he didn't give this flower. He didn't give a book. He didn't give a, uh, you know, uh, somebody a, a box of candy. He gave his only son, he he, which he didn't allow Abraham to do. Because no. that's a type of Christ. Oh, With that uh, there on Mount Moriah, Moriah means provider. Mm -hmm. And Jehovah Jireh provided his son. 3,900 years later, Abraham said, the Lord will provide a lamb. But what Abraham had, he didn't have a lamb. He had a ram. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. it sounds like <laughs> lamb, yeah. ram, but it's not a lamb. 3,900 years ago, he did himself what he wouldn't allow Abraham to do, Hallelujah. sacrifice his son mm. so that we could have eternal life. Mm. And so God's, God's mercy is what you said, April, oh, is not getting what we deserve. Yes. And God's grace is getting what we don't deserve. I mean, isn't that powerful? Yes. yes. So yes. what was the catalyst in your gloom and doom that caused you to cry out to Jesus? And, and, and he said, uh, okay, you got it. <laughs> well, you know, I came to the place where I was desperate. And it was God's appointed time. He had a evangelistic team in the park where I live and I knew that I had to go get on that prayer line and the people that were leading it they embraced me with the mm -hmm. love of God see mm -hmm. the difference between Christianity and any other religion mm -hmm. is love that's it and they embraced me with a love that drew me into the church. They discipled me mm -hmm. and they taught me. When my daughter died, the day of her service, that evening, the enemy tried to tempt me with some of the things that he had me bound with. Mm. That was like, your daughter, April. Yes, right in my face, like right there. And oh, he's an expert at that mm -hmm. because yeah. he knows exactly <laughs> what tempts us. What the flesh you know, he, he knows. You know, glory be to God. Yeah. So, listen to this. Right, God <laughs> is so good. I had no feeling, no emotion, no attachment, and that moment. I, ex I knew I was free. And the scripture came to me that whom the sun sets free mm. is free indeed. Hallelujah. It was profound. It was life changing yes. because I had struggled. And with no work or effort of my own, that thing had no power over me. Hallelujah. And at the same time, my mom and other family members gave their lives to Christ because mm. they witnessed the transforming power Hallelujah. of God. And although they had been in church and been around church and in and out of church mm -hmm. all of their lives, mm -hmm. they never witnessed the power oh. and transforming power Ooh. and delivering power of the Lord. I was ministering to them at the cemetery. I was ministering to them when I was in the hospital. I had the Bible. The Lord gave me this grace 
to go through it. They've never seen anything <laughs> like that before. The power of, of the God, God in your life. the power of his spirit. So, yeah. And those things that uh, the enemy tried to tempt you with, because uh -huh. uh, he'll do that in your weakness. Because mm -hmm. when Jesus fasted for 40 days in the wilderness, uh, he didn't tempt them in the beginning when he was uh, when he had a full meal. Mm -hmm. Right. He, he, he tempted them after, it, you know, the 40 days he was hungry, mm. he was tired. Then he came in. But the word of God was Jesus. And he, he defeated <laughs> Satan by that. And, and all that temptation over there, uh, you were able to have victory over it because of uh, who, who you became in Christ. Born yeah. again Born by the again. power of his Holy Spirit. Yeah. And that's what we need today. We need the power of his Holy Spirit to transform. So I want to ask you a question. Me. Who got saved first? I did. And then when she got saved, what was your reaction when you <laughs> Hallelujah. Out? Thank you, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> hmm. Yes. And like I said, we walked hand in hand for a while. But then God, you know, he moved us in separate directions. But she had her path to go. And I so you worked that. together in the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to go all them. over every place, going to different ministries because we were seeking the Lord together, yeah. which mm -hmm. I knew him. But the power of the Holy Spirit just came in. And, and now, actually, she's out running me, praise God, but mm -hmm. she's younger than I am. Uh, well, <laughs> praise God. You know, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the atheists hate this show. <laughs> mm. They hate it with a passion because it, it refutes their lie that there is no God. Mm. And That's so we've God. done, uh, we're in our ninth year doing shows. Mm. Show after show after show. People's lives have been changed. I'm Jewish, we've had so many Jewish people on that have sought the truth. Mm -hmm. We've had so many Catholics on that have sought the truth. We've had Muslims, we have others on yeah. that have sought the truth and asked God and he's changed their life. Oh, and because there's power in the word of God. Hallelujah. And so, but the most important thing is that heaven is your home. And that prayer that you prayed, you don't have to pray that anymore, April. <laughs> Trust me, you know where you're going when you die. Because, <laughs> April Gus, this has been a great afternoon. This is Amen. such a wonderful show. Amen. Thank you for being here, sweetheart. Thank you for having Amen. me. God, God bless you. you. God bless you. <laughs> yeah, April doesn't have to pray that two minute prayer, then God, let me go to heaven. Because she knows that when she dies, mm. she's going right to be with mm. the Father. Because her sins are forgiven. Jesus paid for her sins on the cross. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Uh, eternal damnation is nowhere near her. Hell, the Lord doesn't want anybody to go to hell. It was made for Satan and his demons. Mm. Mm. But those that reject the blood sacrifice of Christ, that's where eternity is going to start. If it continues in the lake of fire after mm -hmm. Judgment Day, where the soul will burn forever. Don't you have to have that judgment against you. Receive Christ in your heart. Let him change your life, and you'll know the truth like April did. Thank you for watching our broadcast today.